there was finally some additional updates let's just say for for 2022 for this for this franchise but early early this month the washington Post reported that uh steve baldwin was getting ready to to sort of uh commit to sell his shares to billionaire todd bohealy at 25 million still uh about 40 percent less than the initial offer from why michelle king and it was a deal that needed to be approved by the nwsl board of governors and ceo marla messing and the sale needed to be approved by february 1st like the deadline lisa mentioned earlier when the nwsl players go ahead and report for preseason but then ultimately, a few days later, with reporting via The Athletic, uh, a little bit of a plot twist, you know, as it just it just it just thickens, doesn't it? Uh, according to the reporting via The Athletic, uh, why Michelle King obtained majority control, in fact, 52 percent of the majority control by convincing eight of the franchise debt holders to convert their debt to equity, giving King a voting block. A majority voting block giving her the right to vote on governance matters, for example, the potential sale of a club. So just ongoing, I mean, it's almost like this ongoing chess match, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like someone's making a move and someone else is making a counter move. So you have multiple owners, right? You have Steve Baldwin, majority owner. You know, you have Bill Lynch, the founder. You have Y Michelle King trying to to gain ownership really she has emphasized that she wants to be the owner of this club that she believes in a woman-led locally led franchise in a way and she would be able to lead the way to do that uh but in reaching out to several other investors you had she had to do this in a way to obtain majority control and the biggest piece to this was devin talbot along with about seven other minority owners. So Baldwin and Lynch had been working together, obviously, in terms of trying to seek out a deal for this, uh, you know, to, to sell the shares of of this franchise. Um, but it, there's, it's hitting a major, major, major roadblock now that King has worked, you know, with with Devin Taba and these other minority owners to to essentially uh, gain majority ownership at this time, at least voting control. That's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Gaining voting control of this club moving forward. And it it comes with, with Devin Talbot as that main piece with these multiple shares that he ends up selling to King in the form of a note. And the other minority owners convincing them to convert their shares of debt into equity and ultimately like extending this commitment to King. And sort of, it's kind of like, raising the banner and rallying mm -hmm. around this particular uh owner so by having sort of wrestled these votes having wrestled these uh this this amount of percentage at the very least controlling a voting stake that could potentially kill any future sale by way of baldwin and lynch and this was further confirmed in the form of a letter by why Michelle King to the NWSL Board of Governors, which was ultimately uh, obtained and released through uh, Molly Hensi Clancy of, of the Washington Post. Sandra, this is a lot of legal talk. It's a lot of business talk. And um, for me, I'm just a soccer analyst and I like talking soccer and I want the players to be safe, right? So I had to do a lot of research behind what this means because um it's a lot of legal talk that that we're discussing here but i i needed to know and so i did some googling i found out some stuff and i'm going to try to share that with you and our listeners to maybe gain a better understanding of how this is working uh majority owner of the club makes the decisions they sit with the board of governors they meet with um, the other owners of nwsl clubs and they sit on the board of the nwsl and they make these decisions that was what was originally taken away from steve baldwin earlier in the season when he was no longer allowed to be on the board. 
So because he owned majority of the team, he was making the decisions as to who to sell to, to not sell to Y Michelle Kang for $35 million, to potentially sell to others for $25 million, Todd Bohealy uh, at $25 million. And Y Michelle Kang was just sitting in the, the wings waiting for her chance, offering up her money, offering up her services, doing what she can to rally around and gain some ownership and some control of this club to support the players. So because of that, she went to her her partners and her friends that are also part ownership and said, if you give me your shares and if you sell to me, I get to own majority of the Washington spirit. And then I get to make the decisions instead of Steve Baldwin. So because of that, I know you mentioned this, Devin Talbot, he was a huge part of that. And you mentioned uh, he sold his stake in the team in the form of a note. So uh, the form of a note, it's not a letter. I mean, it kind of is. It's a legal IOU. So it's saying that I trust Kang and she gets to represent my partial ownership of this club. And she gets to be the the governing face of my ownership, as well as these seven other minority owners. They did the same in converting their debt to equity with commitment to Kang. So they said Kang gets to represent us. So after all of this was done, Michelle Kang came to own 52% of the spirit. She became the majority owner and the majority investor, and she took back the voting control. So at this point, Kang is in ownership of the Washington spirit. And it all happened so, so quickly through, ro through reporting, through reporting from The Athletic and The Washington Post, and even Michelle Kang writing a letter to the NWSL Board of, of Governors explaining this, explaining the change in ownership, um, the confirmed pur purchase and conversion of Devin Talbot and his note, which is his, his legal IOU saying that Kang gets to own this. Um, uh, Michelle Kang also claimed in that statement and her note that Steve Baldwin, quote, no longer has control of the team or the ability to dictate the teams of any sale. So that is huge, huge, because Michelle Kang essentially did this um, under the table and behind closed doors. And then when all was said and done, she came out and said, uh, stop. Steve Baldwin, you can no longer make any more sales. I'm in charge of what happens with this club now. Um, and we threw out this name, Devin Talbot, out there. So it's interesting to note that um, he is the one that pushed Michelle Kang's stake over the edge into what it claims to be majority ownership of that 52%. He was the biggest piece of that puzzle for Kang. Steve Baldwin is the one that originally brought Devin Talbot into the ownership before. Yeah. So uh, Steve Baldwin and Devin Talbot, they were friends before. They they had partnership in this relationship before, but um, ultimately Talbot leaning towards and leaning into Michelle Kang and understanding that what she wants to do with this club is what is right for the club. So yeah. this all happened so quickly in, in lots of different reporting that was happening, but it's not over yet. I think that's the craziest part. And now fans are asking what's next, right? And and yeah. players, I think even the players at Washington Spirit are saying, so what's next?